The most common questions I get from people are from those that are new to EVs or about to get into one. So that's essentially what this video is about. It's a basics, basics, beginner's guide for what kilowatts, kilowatt hours, how to figure out how much it's costing you to charge. Why don't you get the speeds at the rapid chargers that you should get? Essentially, again, the basics of EV ownership. So hopefully it will help and ease you into what is, well, it's just a car at the end of the day. It's just slightly different, slightly unfamiliar. You know, the first thing that you need as an EV owner is a reliable home charger if you're lucky enough to be able to get one. And for that, you need a reliable home charge installer. I think I know of one. Now, if I needed a home charger, they installed mine, would be getting one from smarthomecharge.co.uk. They have a huge array of chargers. You can scroll down the list. There's a ton of them. You've got a comparison tool. So you tell them what car you've got and they will pick the best one for your particular vehicle. They've got loads of accessories, cables, different lengths. If you need public charging type two, for example, they've got all that. You can pay in full, you can pay in monthly installments and you've got all options I've had mine installed by them, my brothers, Harry's, or by Smart Home Charge, and it's been faultless. Check their Trustpilot score, and please thank them for sponsoring this channel. So it's at smarthomecharge.co.uk. The whiteboard of truth has been brought back to life, back to reality, just as Soul to Soul prophesized, and I think this is the easiest way for me to explain what's going on. So kilowatts, kilowatt hours, let's start with that. Kilowatts is a unit of power. Kilowatt hours is a unit of energy. Let's imagine you just bought an electric car and it's got a 50 kilowatt hour battery. So that's the size of the battery. This is something you should at least be familiar with if you've looked into one or you've just bought one, you'll know what battery size you have. So kilowatts, let's start with that. Now, if you have a home charger, it's almost certainly in the UK going to be a seven kilowatt charger. There are slower speeds and some people will have three phase, but essentially this is by far the most common, seven kilowatts. So let's run with this example. If you plugged this charger, a seven kilowatt charger into your car and it ran at exactly seven kilowatts for one hour, then it would add seven kilowatt hours worth of energy per hour it's on charge. So seven kilowatts running for one hour adds seven kilowatt hours worth of power to your battery. After two hours, it would be 14. After three hours, it will be 21 and so forth. And for the purposes of the people jumping up and down in the comment section right now, I am ignoring charging losses for the purposes of explaining what this is. So that's essentially what kilowatts and kilowatt hours do in EV world. That's the speed of the water flowing through the hose pipe, so to speak. And that's the kilowatt hours, the size of the battery is almost like the amount of water the bucket can hold. Now, what if we change the charger? So let's imagine you plug into a much faster charger now, like a rapid charger, a 50 kilowatt one. So we are now charging at 50 kilowatts. In theory, if it ran at 50 kilowatts consistently for the entire hour, which is unrealistic in the real world, but let's run with it, then after one hour at 50 kilowatts, well, that car would be full if the battery was flat before you started because at 50 kilowatts for one hour you're adding 50 kilowatt hours worth of energy to that battery and that's essentially what a kilowatt and a kilowatt hour means in EV world. Again I'll come back to charging losses and why you will almost never get the maximum speed out of your car's charger or the uh, rapid chargers anyway um, in the real world. So this now hopefully will explain the cost of charging. So let's assume you're charging at home. So the cost, let's say 25 pence per kilowatt hour. You'll be able to figure this out by looking at your electricity bill and it will say the pence per kilowatt hour cost on that bill. Assuming it's static, so let's say you're paying 25p per kilowatt hour of electricity. So 25 pence. You've got a 50 kilowatt hour car. Let's assume by some miracle, it's completely flat. It's on zero kilowatt hour, zero percent. How much would it cost you to fill up that car? Well, it's simple, 25 pence times 50, because that's the car's battery size, 
is all you have to do. So 25 times 50 is 12 pounds 50. Because 25p times 50 kilowatt hours is 12 pound 50. Again, I'm ignoring charging losses in this example. So if you're on a rapid charger, which is a lot more expensive, that's the ones, the big ones at the service areas, it probably won't be 25p, it could be 75p. So that 12 pound 50, which is really badly written there, would not be 12 pound 50 at all. It would be 75 pence times 50, which is, uh, this is 37 pounds 50. So you can see a massive difference there in, well, refueling cost, if you will, from flat to full, depending on what you're plugging into. So at home, I pay just 7.5 pence. I don't pay 75, maybe pay 7.5 pence at night. So that will obviously be massively cheaper than charging on a rapid charger at 75p. Now, I should point out some are 50p, some are 60p, some are 70p, some are even less than 50p. Have a look at the price of the chargers you're plugging into and then just multiply it by how many kilowatt hours you add to that car. So if you've got, I don't know, half a battery and you want to fill it up, then it would be 25 kilowatt hours times however much they're going to charge you for this electric. Gives you a rough guesstimate, again, ignoring losses. What about charging speeds though? This often trips people up. So let me again, once wipe this out once more. This is the car, this is the charger. So again, we're talking about charging speeds. The car that you just bought or the ones that you're looking at will have a maximum charge speed when it comes to the rapid DC charging. So let's imagine that this car can charge a maximum of 150 kilowatts. Because again, that's the charge speed, that's the water going through the hose pipe, so to speak. So that's the maximum the car can go at. The charger, now that obviously will change depending on what you plug into. So let's assume that you plug this car into a, a really big one, a 300 kilowatt charger. Now, the lowest amount dictates how fast you could theoretically go. So if you plug your 150 kilowatt maximum car into a 300 kilowatt charger, it will not go above 150, of course, because that's the most the car can take. And it will work in reverse as well. If you plug a, let's say, 50 kilowatt charger into your car that's capable of doing 150 kilowatts, then the most you will get is 50 because that's the most the charger can give you. Now, we'll see this happen quite a lot of services. Plugging a car into a faster charger doesn't mean the car will charge any faster than it is capable of doing. There's nothing wrong with plugging your car into a 300 kilowatt charger, as in that's the fastest that you can do, but you would never go above the car's maximum, just like you could never go above the charger's maximum if that was lower than this. Now, let's wipe this out again and talk about efficiency. Miles per kilowatt hour or watt hours per mile. There's two here in terms of how efficient your car can be. Miles per kilowatt hour or watt hours per mile. And I'm sorry, anyone in Europe, this is a UK example. I'm keeping this simple. Let's ignore this for a second. This is just telling you the same information in two different ways. It's like someone saying they weigh X amount in stones or X amount in kilograms. They're saying the same thing, just in different ways. So miles per kilowatt hour, it's very much the same, or it's the EV version, if you will, as the petrol miles per gallon. So I'm pretty sure everyone should be familiar with this. If you said, my car does 50 miles per gallon, my petrol car or diesel car, you will probably know that that means that for every gallon of petrol you use, you will get 50 miles from it. Miles per kilowatt hour is essentially just that. If you're EV, so my EV is average, averaged four miles per kilowatt hour over the last 60,000 miles. So let's use that, four miles per kilowatt hour. Four times 50 will be a 200 mile range because you're getting four miles for every kilowatt hour that that car can give you. If you didn't get four miles per kilowatt hour and you only got three miles per kilowatt hour, then it would be three times 50, which would be 150 mile maximum range. So that's what miles per kilowatt hour is. And this is probably the most common um, way of the car displaying how efficient it's running in the UK. But some, like Tesla, use watt hours per mile. 
So let me explain what that one is very briefly because some people will have the most popular EV in Europe, a Tesla. So let's stick with what I'm being getting, four miles per kilowatt hour. The equivalent to that is 250 watt hours per mile. Let me explain, it's all down to the number 1000. They say the same thing. The way you can convert that to that or that to that is essentially divide by a thousand or rather divide that from a thousand. So 1000 divided by four is 250. So now we've just converted miles per kilowatt hour into watt hours per mile. So let me explain by reversing it. If you wanted to turn that into that, 1000 divided by 250 is four. So just remember the 1000, divide it by whichever figure you want, and that will give you the other figure. You don't really need to know this if you're just new to EVs. I just thought I'd explain it because some people will see both figures. Now, I mentioned charging losses earlier on in the video. Now, I'm not gonna get into technical details on this one, but essentially, if your charger is putting out seven kilowatts, you won't get seven kilowatts in your EV. There are losses there transmission losses, conversion losses. I don't need to go into technical detail, as I said, but essentially you lose a percentage of everything that the charger puts out that actually eventually ends up in the battery. To fully charge a completely flat 50 kilowatt hour battery will probably use about 53, 54 kilowatt hours worth of energy. There are many variations in this. You think, hang on a minute, I've used 55 kilowatt hours filling up my 50 kilowatt hour car, how is this? Well, it's essentially because of those losses. It's like having a little leak, if you will, in the hose pipe. Just a few drips as it's converting itself, as it's going into the car or the bucket in this case. So that, that's essentially all it is. I don't want to explain it in any further detail. That's for a different video entirely. Now, let me very briefly explain why rapid chargers will almost never give you the speed that you think you can get. So again, let's assume you've got a 50 kilowatt hour car and the maximum speed that that car can do in terms of charging is, let's say 150 kilowatts. So that's the maximum speed that manufacturer states that that car can take. This is a graph of rapid charging and it's technically close enough for this example, but again, don't jump up and down in the comment section because I've not done it quite right or what. This is the percentage of the battery, zero, 50%, 100%. This is the speed of charge. So 75 kilowatts, 150 kilowatts, the faster or the higher it up it is, the faster the charger is going. It will be brilliant if it could plug in a 150 kilowatt car into a 150 kilowatt charger and it just run at 150 kilowatts the entire time, which would be something like this. That would be brilliant, but that does not happen in the real world, unfortunately, because there are many variables that dictate or can change the speed that that rapid charger will put energy into your car. The temperature of your battery, that's quite a big one. That's why a lot of cars now preheat the battery before they rapid charge, because if it's not at the ideal temperature for the battery to rapid charge, then it will go slower than your car can actually take. Sometimes you end up at a charger that can charge two cars at once, but halves the speed. This is quite common in UK service areas. If two cars are plugged into the same charger, then a 150 kilowatt charger turns into two 75 kilowatt chargers. The higher the state of charge, the slower the rapid charge will be. The temperature can affect it. The, uh, the, again, if you're sharing the charger. So this here, if you were in a car that's got a very cold battery, it, it might not even go above 75 kilowatts. And then we'll just tail off near the end as well. So that's why, it, it often catches people out. I've seen this a lot at service areas myself where someone's plugging in their car at, and you say, well, I, I can do 150. Why am I not getting it into a 150 charger? If you're at 75% already, you're never gonna get the speed that the car's capable of because the higher the state of charge, the slower it will be, which is why if you are rapid charging, unplug at 80, 85%, this varies on the car because once you get to the top kind of 10, 20%, the charge rate will be very slow. You're actually more efficient doing two 40% charges than one 80% charge, depending on the car, of course, there are, there are variables just to complicate it even further because that two 
charge will be at the optimum speed. So you're doing the charge very fast and then driving and then doing the charge very fast and then driving rather than one long charge that's going to slow right down. I mean, if I think back to my original Nissan Leaf, it took as long to go from 80% to 100% as it did from 10% to 80% because the charge rate just drops right off. And to stop, I think this is quite important in terms of charging etiquette, to stop blocking a charger, if your car has anywhere above certainly 90% or more, even if you're not finished eating or whatever, move your car from that rapid charger. Believe me, you will get to the point where you get to a charger and they're full. And there'll be some guy on, or a girl at 98% clearly finished charging, although technically it's still going, who's just finishing their food or something like that. You will get annoyed at that stage. So don't be that person. Unplug your car when you've got enough to carry on your journey. Move it to another spot and then carry on. We're talking two or three minutes out of your time here. It's not a biggie, but it will increase the throughput of the chargers and make things a lot more efficient in this far from perfect charging network that we've got at the moment. So uh, yeah, hopefully that will help. If you do want to help the channel, then please click the members only button. It's 99p a month, which is what, a quarter of a pint at today's rates. You get videos on Sunday instead of the regular Friday upload. And there are now members only videos for those that want the extra kind of behind the scenes content. If you just want to help any YouTube channel out that you like, like and subscribe. Type a comment effectively, because that means that YouTube pushes it onto more people, which helps the channel out. That's why every single video you watch says the same thing. So now I've done the sales plug. Thank you to Smart Home Charge as well for sponsoring the channel. And hopefully that helped someone. So if it did help you out, then, well, it'll make your life just a little bit easier. All for the sake of a short YouTube video. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you soon.